You made me say that in public the other day, Sophia. Mm-hmm, I know. Even after that, you didn't catch me. You probably did, but you thought you were dreaming. But you said, hey, did the Amazon packages come yet? And I said, yupper. Yeah, you said the yupper, and I heard you. I heard you, and I was like, oh, I'm getting through. I'm breaking through. Welcome to Rocket to Anywhere, the podcast where Corban is ready for Christmas and Sophia isn't. I am ready for Christmas on the day of Christmas, and I am ready for it to end on the day of Christmas. Well, I'm Corban, and that's Sophia. Yeah. We have no follow-up this week, and we're going to do a little bit of a quick episode, because next week, next Saturday, we're going to be coming out with the Thanksgiving special. Now on to Thought of the Week. What do you have, Sophia? A broken clock is right twice a day. But a working clock could be wrong the entire day. Mind blown. You know, I first heard the whole thing like a broken clock is wrong. I mean, it was right twice a day. I heard that from Winnie the Pooh. He's like, oh, my clock stopped at 11. It's always tea time. I thought tea time was at 2. Well, I mean, in Winnie the Pooh, he said it was at 11. We don't know anything about British people. My thought is, your shadow is a confirmation that light has traveled nearly 93 million miles unobstructed, only to be deprived of reaching the ground for the final few feet thanks to you. That just makes people feel bad. Yeah, They're the reason the sun can't hit the ground. Everyone go inside. Why Why are you stopping the light from hitting the ground, okay? It came all this way just to hit you. Now that sounded good. Yeah. You need to say it in a better tone. Speaking of that, this week's learn a word is platitude. Platitude. P-L-A-T-I-T-U-D-E. Something that seems deep, but has been used too much to mean anything. Okay. We used to have a saying, Sophia and I used to have a saying, um, that we that we thought of outside of the, the parking lot of a movie theater before seeing The Force Awakens, like, however many years ago. And we decided to say, I don't know what, why that had anything to do with what I was about to just say, but we came up with saying, instead of saying, that's deep, we should say, that's shallow. Yeah. And then when something's shallow, we say, that's deep. No. When something, I said this too in the parking lot. When something is deep, you say, that's deep. Well, now on to joke time, or as they used to say, everyone's favorite part of every single episode, joke of the fortnight. What do you have? So, two friends are having a conversation. One of them is acting like a person. The other one is acting like a potato. Okay? And not like couch potato, but like potato. Like their their icon thingy is a potato. You know? Okay. Those all picture thingy? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, it says, I made a stew. It was awesome. I love potato. And then the potato says, I love you too. And then the potato says, wait, what was in the stew? Get okay. It. You get it? You get it? First joke, what do you call a web developer who finds bugs? A spider. How does that even make sense? So, you know, like a coder, a web developer, who is looking for bugs or issues in their code. Oh. Spider. Whatever. Let's do some child logic. I'll be reading the part of teacher. And I'll be reading the part of the kid. Maria, go to the map and find north. Here it is. Now, class, who discovered it? Maria. (laughs) <laughs> Glenn, how do you spell crocodile? K-R-O-K-O-D-I-A-L Uh, no, that, that's wrong. Maybe it's wrong, but you asked me how I spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, what is the chemical formula for H2O? H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O What are you talking about? Yesterday you said it's H2O. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. Okay, now I have a story, which I saw a couple of weeks ago, and I've been meaning to tell you guys, but I barely wrote it down. I so. know, all my stuff is like a month old because I like forget to tell it. Oh. So here we go. A woman brought a very limp duck into a veterinary surgeon. As she laid her pet on the table, the vet pulled out his stethoscope and listened to the bird's chest. After a moment or two, the vet shook his head and sadly said, I'm sorry, your duck Cuddles has passed away. The distressed woman wailed, Are you sure? 
Yes, I'm sure. Your duck is dead, the vet replied. How can you be so sure, she protested. I mean, you haven't done any testing on him or anything. He might just be in a coma or something. The vet rolled his eyes, turned around, and left the room. He had returned a few minutes later with a black Labrador retriever. As the duck's owner looked on in amazement, the dud stood on his hind legs, put his front paws on the examination table, and sniffed the duck from top to bottom. Then he looked up at the vet with sad eyes and shook his head. The vet patted the dog on the head and took it out of the room. A few minutes later, he returned with the cat. The cat jumped on the table and also delicately sniffed the bird from head to foot. The cat, back on his haunches, shook its head, meowed softly, and strolled out of the room. The vet looked at the woman and said, I'm sorry, but as I said, this is most definitely 100% certifiably a dead duck. The vet turned to his computer terminal, hit a few keys, and produced a bill, which he handed to the woman. The duck's owner, still in shock, took the bill. $150, she cried. $150 just to tell me my duck is dead? The vet shrugged. I'm sorry. If you had just taken my word for it, the bill would have been $20. But with the <laughs> lab report and the CAT scan, it's $150. <laughs> Puns. <laughs> yes. Psst. I know something you've probably never seen in your life. You know about it. You want to know what it is? Sure. A Chinese food commercial. What? Think about it. You've never seen a Chinese food commercial in your life. I mean, you've seen it inside a Chinese restaurant, but not... You're anywhere. right. I've never seen that. Exactly. I've seen Korean food commercials. Mm, Japanese. Japanese. You've yeah. seen ramen. You've seen fake ramen. What's the coldest month of the year? In Texas, you'll never know. It's November. No. Yeah, no. I just just some person submitted that joke. Whoever you are, I'm pretty sure. Like, I can see who who sent this and where they're from. Let's see. They're from Ontario, Canada. Yeah, <laughs> that's the coldest month of the year mm-hmm. in in Ontario, Canada. But not here in Texas. Sorry. So, children, a warning: use your imagination, please. It's in this box. So this kid got a test, and at the bottom of it, it has this big box, and it says. Students may not write outside the box. And then the kid drew a box underneath that and said, but we can still think outside of it. Bravo. Yes. Why can't you trust hay? Because it's for horses. No, because they always bail on you. Actually, it's the farmer who bails it, so yeah. Thanks to my friend Gabe, uh, Gabe Taco. I don't remember what he calls himself anymore these days. Gabe something on Twitter. You know who you are. Now on to an upcoming holiday. Friday, November 17th is Unfriend Day, a.k.a. Unfollow People Day. So, go about your Instagram following list, your Facebook friend list, or your Twitter following list, and just start unfollowing people that you and do not be following. And your Snapchat, and your, and your, all your social medias, and your TBH and everything else. Well, TBH is like an in-school thing, so like it's not like you can remove people from your school. No, but you can remove the whole entire app. <laughs> yes, there you go. That's the best idea. Remove apps. Yes, it's owned remove by Facebook. Them. There you go. Now you want to delete it. Anyway, so after after you cleaned your phone out and started unfollowing people, November 17th also happens to be National Hiking Day. So head out for a hike. It's a great time to go hiking in most places, unless you're like blizzard of snow and stuff. It's a beautiful fall weather in the trees, and you're going to go out there taking pictures on Instagram. Oh, and my beautiful fall picture that you want to buy from me. Yeah, Sophia took a great picture, and I wanted to... Yes, he comes over to me. Why are you laying on the floor? And I was like, to get a picture, and he just shook his head. And I was like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want it. Well, now on to today I learned. Today I learned that accents in the UK change noticeably every 25 miles. Many British people have admitted that they change their accent dependent on what situation or where they are. And speaking of this, uh, I, I googled it while I was doing a little bit of research to make sure this is true, and also found out... Thanks to the BBC, which hopefully, I mean, usually is reliable. BBC says that the Queen herself changes her accent depending on where she is. They didn't give an explanation, but I was talking with someone about this the other day. And I was started to think, you know, the reason is probably that when the Queen goes to a different location where people talk differently, she wants to, like, get on their level more and show that, like, I'm also common folk. Probably. I don't know. That's just what I was thinking. 
Well, now to topics. We have two topics this week, one of which is tips for traveling. So the holidays are upon us, and everyone's heading out, you know, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, all traveling. Or for just vacation, because you're lonely. Yeah. Wait, do people travel for New Year's? Yes. They do? Yes. Like, what are you going to do? The only but, place... Corban, people usually take a vacation four times a year. That's not including Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, Memorial Day, whatever vacation day. day yeah, are. but, like, where are you going to go on New Year's? Just going to New York City to watch the ball drop? No. How many balls do they have to drop? Anyway. Okay. <laughs> don't um, they, didn't they drop it last year? Why do they keep dropping it? Yeah, don't they shatter or something? Anyway, this week we're going to be talking about tips for traveling. So, Sophia and I have compiled a couple of tips from the internet and from ourselves, uh, from our experience or from other people's experiences in traveling, and we have some stuff for you. So, why don't you go first? No matter where you go, no matter what you're doing, no matter what time of year, always take a towel with you. Yeah. Always. Because even if you're going to a hotel where they supposedly have towels, Mm -hmm. you might end up at a hotel. Keep that word in mind. Yeah, you might end up at a hotel like the one we stayed out like two years ago. Okay, 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 okay. They had towels. They had like ten towels in our room, but uh, they either got lost or completely wet or... Well, that's a different one. I'm talking about the one where they they wouldn't give us new towels. They said, you have to reuse your old towels. Oh, yeah. And when I called down, they're like, uh, I said, okay, can I get some new towels? And they're like, no, you're going to have to use the blow dryer to dry them off. What? The blow dryer doesn't work. Yeah, that that yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, what what hotel? Why why are you why are you making your people do this? Anyway, so yeah, I always bring a towel because sometimes even like the pool won't offer a towel, and but you don't. You can bring it just to like for a picnic or if you're cold yeah. or if you're wet, you somehow get wet, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, a leaking radiator or something. It's even good, like, if you spill a drink in your hotel room and you don't want to use the hotel's towels to pick it up. <laughs> that That's so true, because, like, we were at a hotel on vacation a couple of weeks ago, or was it, like, last month, and I dropped a bag of Cheetos on the floor. Yeah. And, well, I was... That's where they went! My, okay, you yeah, said you ate them. Okay, well, my first Eating instinct... Eating them would have been better than throwing them my away. My first instinct was to call the dog, but the dog wasn't there. Yeah. Dog's at home. Yeah. Okay, my first tip for traveling is to maximize space in your suitcase, put your clothing or socks and stuff inside gallon-sized Ziploc bags and squeeze all the air out. Yes. That is, like, super helpful when you need, like, when you've been given a size restriction for how much you can pack. Stick it all in there, squeeze all the air out, zip it up close, and put it in. What's next? Do not, and I repeat, do not. What did I say? Do not. What did I say? Don't. What? Do not. Okay? Do not. Do not. Go. To the tourist places, okay? That is you're true. You're wasting your, your life away. You're wasting your vacation, okay? Unless you're going to somewhere like New York City. You have to see the Empire State Building and the Statue of Liberty. Okay, yeah. Those are like landmark thingies, not, you know? I'm saying don't get on a tour bus, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you're coming here to Dallas, don't get on those tour buses and ride around Dallas. Yeah, don't. You'll get bird poop on you. You'll almost get your head chopped off by going under a bridge, and you will see nothing but fields and walls. Mm -hmm. When you're traveling, you need a travel list, a packing list for you, but sometimes you sit down to start writing your packing list, and then you just don't even know what you're supposed to take with you. Like me, every single time. It's either you don't know what to take with you, or you don't know what not to take. You have everything but the kitchen sink, as people say. So to come up with what you need to pack, I recommend an app called Travel List. It's $2 on the iOS app store. I don't think it's available on Android, but there's similar apps out there. Just search for them. And it uh, pre-populates lists. So you just type in what type of travel you're doing. If you're doing international travel, within country travel, like an out of town, just depending on what type of travel. And it recommends what you should pack. Super useful app. And it helps you, you know, keep track of everything and if you lose stuff while you're traveling or if you're leaving your hotel, it's the best part. You're leaving your hotel or wherever you were staying and you don't remember if you packed everything, you can just check your packing list in the app and see if you have everything with you. Next. I'm going to say this, not to be mean and not to offend anybody with a big family, but because we are a big family, wherever you go, on your vacation or anywhere, just wherever you go, do not ever go near a family. 
don't go to the bathroom with the family. I mean, not like join their family, but like, <laughs> like follow. Don't don't ever be behind somebody's family in a line, in a restaurant, in the restroom, anywhere. Why? Because they hold everything up. <laughs> It's like, if, like we, you know, you have stuff to do, and, and you have a lot of people to do it with. Okay? Yeah, so you as a family? No. Oh, oh you're speaking as, as a person who's yes, going Yes, as alone. you going on a vacation with okay, your four-person yeah. family. Or yeah, maybe three, we'll or hold two, up the one. line. We'll gladly hold up the line for you, okay? Yes. My second to last tip is bring a couple of trash bags. You oh, yeah. tr- Trust me, you will always find a use for them. Yes. Okay, there's always some reason you're going to need it. Most recently, I bought a trash, just a couple of trash bags, and I was able to use them to wrap up Sophia's shoes oh, yeah. because they were covered in mud. No, thanks to the rain. No, in, in, in pool water. Oh, yeah, and pool water, too. It's a weird combination. You can also use it to pack your dirty clothes. Yeah. Anything else? Or just random stuff you find in a hotel that you want to take with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like uh, Doris from Vegasanasi. Can I have the blanket and peel us? No, you can't take the blanket and pillows with you. Well, you could. I mean, they're not going to notice because they are clean you, ever. Nor can you take the TV, the shift robe, <laughs> or the microwave. Anything else? Here's my slogan, tip, just do it thingy, you know, whatever it's called. Go exploring, not touring, okay? Ooh, that's a great slogan. Because there is a very big difference. Okay? Is that on a t-shirt? Someone should put that on a t-shirt. No, I came up with that, okay? Yeah, thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Copyrighted, okay? <laughs> I'm guaranteed. None of you people out there listening better go make that a t-shirt thing. I guarantee if you put that on a mug or a t-shirt. Okay, wait, wait. I will let you, if you go on a vacation and you have a blank t-shirt and you're like, I don't like solid color shirts, you can write that on that t-shirt. I I, I accept that. And, and on I the other let you side. Do that. But you must write at the bottom. And on the Sophia. other side, you can put normals always changing. No. On the, on the bottom, you have to put by Sophia. Okay. okay. S-O-F-I-A. Thank you. My last tip is something I learned from a friend of the show, Matthew Bird, host of our former rival podcast, The Ox Cable. They don't make episodes anymore. So, they don't? Yeah, they don't. I don't know where they went. Anyway, he has uh, Matthew Bird came up with this way of folding fitted sheets that is like amazing. You would never think of it. So you can watch that video. It's going to be in the show notes. But it really helps you if you're packing fitted sheets for some reason, which I don't know why you would, unless you're going to like an Airbnb or something. Okay, I'm but... pretty sure they're called bed sheets. Yeah, bed sheets. Well, I don't know how, how people call them. Anyway, you can watch that Blanket video. Blanket sheets, pillowcases, whatever. Yeah. Do you have anything else or is that all? That's it. Okay. So that's going to be all for this week's episode of the podcast. Now, before we end this week's episode, what do you have to recommend this week? My account. Oh, yes. Yeah. Photography account. Yes. Uh, again, if you want a link for that, it's an Instagram account. I'll be setting up a Twitter page for it so that if you're a Twitter person, you can follow it too. It'll be in the show notes at rta.space slash floridy. 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 <laughs> My recommendation this week is the Ungenius podcast. Ungenius is a show dedicated to covering the weirdest articles found on Wikipedia. Hosts Stephen Hackett and Mike Hurley are here to explain topics and share knowledge you'll never be able to use in real life. Wait, but it's cool. It's something you can learn. Okay, if this is your first time listening to our podcast, thank you for listening. You can find the best way for you to subscribe from wherever you're listening on a phone, tablet, computer, whatever, at rta.space slash listen. If you have any time, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. And if you have any suggestions, you can email us, rocket2anywhereshow at gmail.com, or tweet us at RTA Show. Again, show notes for this week's episode are available at rta.space slash 40, and you can follow me on Twitter at Corbon Garcia, and follow Sophia on Instagram at extra underscore Sophia, S-O-F-I-A, or you can follow photography, because I actually post on there, at Coolio underscore photography, K-O-O-L-I-O. Well, that's going to be it for this week's episode. We'll be back next Saturday instead of our normal schedule. We'll be back next Saturday with our Thanksgiving special, a one-hour extravaganza, I guess you could say, of our show. But until then, this this rocket rocket has has landed. landed.
So, if you're going to say yup, you can say yup. You can be plain old, normal, you know, weirdo, who's normal now. Um, and you can say yuppies, or you can say yupper doodle donkey, or you can say yeah. I say yupper doodle dandy is better. I don't know. That is my opinion. I say yuppies. Because it's more historically accurate. Yankee Doodle the point went to was town. to be not normal. Not historical yak right now. Girl, I can't even say it. There's a Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. Catch a feather in his head and call him macaroni. Yankee Doodle. Wait, where's the dandy come from then? Hold on, then I'm wrong. Yankee Doodle dandy. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I remember the songs I was four. And I'm five now. Okay, I'm done. Okay.